24th December 1916 Lord, without allowing my mind to become aware of what was going to happen and how it was going to happen, Thou gavest me this evening a foretaste of what Thou expectest from me, only a foretaste, for it is a first, very timid step upon the marvellous road Thou hast partially opened before me. It was like a rising flood, swelling, ever swelling, the river until it overflows and covers everything with its beneficent waters. And this time it was the heart which thus overflowed under the pressure of the powers of love thou didst pour into it. And the whole being began to love, to love ever more and more, without any definite aim. Nothing and everything at the same time, what it knows and does not know, what it sees and has never seen. And gradually this potential love became an effective love, ready to pour itself out upon all and everything in beneficent waves, in an active effulgence, this was a beginning, a very weak beginning. But I knew, O Lord, that this is what Thou willest. As always, Thy will is an infinite grace which floods the being with Thy divine delight and transports it far above all petty contingencies to the glory of thy celestial dwelling places. To be what thou willest is to be divine. 25th December 1916 what I heard in the silence and noted down last evening. By renouncing everything, even wisdom and consciousness, thou wert able to prepare thy heart for the role assigned to it, apparently the most unrewarding role, that of the spring which always lets its waters flow abundantly for all, but towards which no waters can ever run back. It draws its inexhaustible strength from the depths and expects nothing from outside. But thou canst already sense the sublime felicity that accompanies this inexhaustible expansion of love, for love is sufficient unto itself and needs no reciprocity. This is true even of individual love. How much more true than of divine love which so nobly reflects the infinite Be this love in all things and everywhere, ever more widely, ever more intensely, and the whole world will become at the same time thy work and thy wealth, thy field of action and thy conquest. Fight with persistence to break down the last limits which are only frail barriers before the expansion of the being, to vanquish the last obscurities already being lit up by the illuminating power. Fight in order to conquer and triumph. 
fight to overcome everything that was till today to make the new light spring forth the new example the world needs fight stubbornly against all obstacles inner or outer it is the pearl of great price which is offered for thy realization december 26th 1916 translation by shri arubindo always the word thou makest me hear in the silence is sweet and encouraging o lord but i see not in what this instrument is worthy of the grace thou accordest to it or how it will have the capacity to realize what thou attendest from it all in it appears so small weak and ordinary so lacking in intensity and force and amplitude in comparison with what it should be to undertake this overwhelming role but i know that what the mind thinks is of little importance the mind itself knows it and passive it awaits the working out of thy decree thou biddest me strive without cease and i could wish to have the indomitable ardor that prevails over every difficulty but thou hast put in my heart a peace so smiling that i fear i no longer know even how to strive things develop in me faculties and activities as flowers bloom spontaneously and without effort in a joy to be and a joy to grow a joy to manifest thee whatever the mood of thy manifestation if struggle there is it is so gentle and easy that it can hardly be given the name but how small is this heart to contain so great a love and how weak this vital and physical being to carry the power to distribute it thus thou hast placed me on the threshold of the marvelous way but will my feet have the strength to advance upon it but thou replies to me that my movement is to soar and it would be an error to wish to walk who lord how infinite is thy compassion once more thou hast taken me in thy omnipotent arms and cradled me on thy unfathomable heart and thy heart said to me torment not thyself at all be confident like a child art thou not myself crystallized for my work 27th december 1916 translation by shri arubindo o my beloved lord my heart is bowed before thee my arms are stretched towards thee imploring thee to set all this being on fire with thy sublime love that it may radiate from there on the world my heart is wide open in my breast 
My heart is open and turned towards thee. It is open and empty that thou mayest fill it with thy divine love. It is empty of all but thee and thy presence fills it through and through and yet leaves it empty for it can contain also all the infinite variety of the manifested world. O Lord, my arms are outstretched in supplication towards Thee. My heart is wide open before Thee that Thou mayest make of it a reservoir of thy infinite love. Love me in all things, everywhere and in all beings, was thy reply. I prostrate myself before thee and ask of thee to give me that power. December 29th, 1916 Translation by Sri Aurobindo O my sweet Lord, teach me to be the instrument of thy love. 30th December 1916 Why, O Lord, does my heart seem to me to be so cold and dry? I feel, I see my soul living deep within my being and my soul sees thee, recognizes thee and loves thee in all things, in everything that is. It is fully conscious of this and as the outer being is surrendered to it, it too is conscious. The mind knows and never forgets. The purified vital being no longer has any attractions and repulsions and more and more does it taste of the joy of thy presence in all things and always. But the heart seems to have fallen asleep in a slumber of exhaustion and the soul no longer finds sufficient activity within it to respond fully to its impulsion. Why? Was it so poor that the struggle could thus wear it out or so deeply wounded that it has become quite stiff. And yet, it would like to answer the inner call. It wants this with a faith and ardour which have never wavered. But it is like an old man smiling benevolently at the games of youth, but unable to take part in them. And yet, it is full of joy and confidence. It overflows with gratitude for all the treasures of affection which nature has so generously lavished upon it. It would like, in exchange for these precious gifts, to pour out in inexhaustible streams the golden wine of tenderness which restores and fortifies, enlivens and consoles the true wine of life for human beings. It would like to and tries, but how poor is what it does beside what it dreams of doing? How mediocre what it is able to do beside what it hopes, for it hopes 
always. It knows that thy call is never heard in vain and it has no doubt it can one day realize the splendors of which thou hast given it a glimpse. Who will open these closed floodgates my heart loves in its human way and in its human way it seems to me it loves with strength, constancy and purity. But thou wouldst have it love divinely in a boundless unfolding of thy sovereign power and this remains yet unrealized for it. Who will open these closed floodgates? 